Hey everybody, my name is Parker J. Fister. The gang over at Alien Skin has asked me to make a few tutorials. So after um, figuring out how to pronounce tutorial, I uh, am getting ready to put this together for you. I will warn you, the camera on my monitor is unfortunately broken so you can't see me as I work because I know everybody wants to do that. But just a quick, um, so you can put a face with the voice and everything. Here's a quick shot of me. There I am, and good. So today we're going to uh, discuss and play around a little bit with Alien Skin Exposure 5. I use this basically with every image that I work on. And I usually go through Lightroom. Kind of my workflow is photo mechanic. I do all my culling sort the images down to the ones I want. They get transferred over to Lightroom, which they come up here. Um, and I've just pulled just a couple images to demonstrate some stuff today. And then we'll kind of go through the workflow kind of from here uh, on an image. So I think, you know, these are some of the images that uh, the Alien Skin has run. Maybe you've seen them uh, in their finished state. This is the beginning state. So without further ado and without blabbing for hours let's get started so here we're in the uh, library module of lightroom and with an option command 2 we are in the develop module or you can just go up here and library develop whatever so this is kind of the base image this is what we're starting with you can see it's a 50 millimeter f1 huh. well it's actually uh the, this image, along with several of these, actually, were taken with the Fuji XE1. Yes, I had a kind of homemade lens put on here, um, and it wasn't actually attached to the camera itself, so it reads a 50mm f1. It is a fast lens, but however, not quite that fast. So from here, this is the base image, what we're starting with. The camera shoots square and it shoots 2-3 ratio. Most of the time I shoot square. Sometimes it goes back to a 4 by 5 ratio, but most of the time square or 4 by 5 hardly ever, you know, a 2-3. So let's get started with this image. I basically shot it the way I wanted it to look. So the only thing that, let's reset it to the way, fully the way it comes in which it actually keeps the crop on the Fuji. So it comes in looking just like this. So I'm just going to bump up the exposure just a little tiny bit, maybe half stop. I don't too much. I always shoot under instead of over. I don't want to lose highlights like this little part right here. I don't want to lose that. And by putting the hand over it, you can see in the top right hand corner, that I'm at like 69% white here. So, you know, plenty of room to go there without it being blown out. And I may give just a little contrast. This lens that I'm using is very, very flat in the way that it's made. So, you gotta bump up the contrast a little bit. And it's a very soft lens too. So, it's very sharp, but it has kind of this halo over top of it. You can see your eyelashes here, but there's a little bit of softness, which I like. That's what I love about this lens. So I'm just going to boost the sharpening up just a little bit. Actually, a lot more uh, for the Fuji than like a DSLR. Um, I, I tend to sharpen the Fuji just a little bit more. And I'll give this just because of this lens. Now, I don't use clarity very much at all. But with this particular lens, I will use clarity to kind of beat some of that haze out of there. So that's kind of our general image, what we're going to start with. I like the white balance and everything, but, you know, I know that I'm going to mess with this in, because as I shot this, I was thinking more of a, a pastel of, of like a, a cyan kind of over top, kind of keeping the lips and her eyes uh, the same color. So. Out of here, um, I got it the way I like it, so I can just right click on the image, edit in. Now I could go straight into exposure here, but I go into Photoshop first. That way I can do any kind of retouching, just little things here and there if I need to. 
So I'm going to go in here. J on the keyboard is the spot healing brush tool. You can see J. And I'm just going to just edit out a few little teeny tiny things that I overlooked kind of in the lighting. There we go. Just a few things here and there. And now Command J or Apple J will make a new layer. Still using that same brush. And I'm just going to edit out a few little things here. Now, the reason that I made a duplicate layer, I'll show you in just a minute, is when I take stuff out, I don't want them to be gone forever. I want them to be kind of sort of there. I want it to look real. I just want to tone down some of these shadows that were my fault, not her fault. In the lighting, bring that down just a little bit. And that was more the patch tool there. Now you can see this obvious patch going on. And there's this little bit of light where I didn't get enough fill under there. But do that as well. Do that one again real quick. She's, she's borderline perfect anyway. So now I'm just going to drop the opacity of this top layer. Okay, that's nothing on. And I'm just going to bring it in just a little tiny bit. I want the stuff to still be there so she looks real and not plastic. There we go. We're good. And that's really all I need to do to this image, except the finishing touch. And that's exposure five. You can see I have all of Alien Skin's fun stuff <laughs> since, since a long time ago. Uh, so let's open this up. And I said I wanted to go more to that uh, kind of a blue cyan look. So I hang out like with color images. I'm basically a Kodachrome boy, Kodachrome 25 sharp, and then I'll warm it up a little bit. Or I'm a Polaroid or cross-processing. So um, the Polaroid stuff is here and you can, you know, they, they have a lot of presets in here. You can kind of play around with and find the exact look you want, or you can find something really close and then tweak it a little bit. So let me go into, I think this one, I did more of a cross process look. And when I cross process, I like the Provia 100F. And I think we'll use the mild here. So from here, that's kind of the straight, straight uh, get go. The first thing I'm going to look at is figure out, you know, my sharpness and where I want to go with the focus. Because I already put some on there. So there again, this is a Fuji file with this really strange lens on here that gives soft, soft, soft photos. But once they're sharpened up, they give amazing realistic results. So that's about where I want it there with that. And now let's talk about some color toning. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get tones in here. You can do some split toning. Uh, up here you can do a color filter over top of the whole thing where it's more global. Or we can go into the channels of the curves. This is how I do everything. So I can, like, by changing the channel here, from RGB just to the blue, I'm just messing with this blue channel of things. And I'm just grabbing this and just yang, yang, yang it around. Um, and you can just drag that dot off and you're back to square one. Well, what I want to do is the bottom left-hand corner where it's pegged out in black, I'm going to drop that just a little bit so where the shadows are going to go blue. See what it's doing? It's kind of making that look that, that I'm really looking for, for this particular image. With the green, I may get rid of that center, and I may do something of the same, only not quite as much. And raise the center just a little bit. The reason why, you can see she's getting a little bit kind of kind of pinky magenta in the face, there's several ways I can do that. I can raise the green 
just a smidge, or I can go into the red channel and bring that down just a smidge up here. But I really don't want to do that because I want to keep your lips the way they are. So I want to go back to that green channel. And I'm just going to raise it just a little bit here to where I like it, which is right in there. Go back to the RGB. And now I can concentrate on more the contrast look of this image. Any kind of shadows, any kind of highlights that were clipped, which is not anything even close. And just bring the overall mid-tone bump up. There we go. And maybe go down. I'm going to check my grain here because it put an automatic grain with that particular preset. So I want to check and make sure it's nice and tight in the way I want, not like overdone, which it looks perfect to me. And now I want to do just a little bit of a vignette on this image. So I always do a vignette. I take the softness all the way down to zero, so I know exactly what I'm getting here. And I just leave it just like that. I'm kidding. Um, Take softness all the way down, and then I'll get my size, kind of where I want it, and the shape I want. So your roundness can be round or you can be square. That's totally up to you. If you want to be hip, you'll be round. If you want to be square, well, you'll be square. So get it right in there, do a little distortion to it, and now size it down to her so it kind of fits and looks natural. The vignette location, you can move this around. So it just kind of catches the front of her here and highlights more of the face and it gives more of a directional light coming in. Even though it was directional, I want to give it just a little more attitude. Around, just a little bit, not like really hard, like, you know, like that. I want it very subtle. Everything I do, I want to be really, really subtle. Okay, so that's pretty close to what I want. So I'm going to say I like it. And I'm going to click Apply. Do, 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 do. Boom. There. It's basically the finished image. Now, am I going to clean it up a little bit more? Yeah, I don't know. I may make another, I may want to direct a little more light that way, or I could play around with the curves outside of there. I've got everything set in the exposure. Now I can kind of play around in here, and now I can get very particular about where the tones that I'm working on by clicking this little doodad right here on the curves. I can bring up just this tone and bring down just this tone. So I'm really isolating the contrast on her. There we go. And now I may want to do another curves layer on top of this and just drop the blacks to give it that glowy kind of feel. And then in this layer mask, I can just paint her face back in with a brush black color. I want my hardness then zero. And the opacity up here, I've got like 20%. I'm probably going to do like 10%. And I'm just going to start working it just ever so slightly. And all this is doing is really just putting the direction right to her face versus, you know, we did the we did the thing with the vignette in exposure. Well, now I'm kind of forcing everyone's eye to go to her face where I want it to go with just a little bit of contrast. So here it's kind of evenly contrasted. And by turning this on, I just kind of wipe out the, the uh, absolute darks down in here and bring out that in the front, in her face. Flatten it down, save it, close it, and it shows up right back in my catalog. So we have a beginning, pre-aliens, after the aliens have landed, which I love that much better.
So stay tuned for more of these wonderfully orchestrated tutorials. There, I said it twice today. Yeah, I'm going to have some more coming up. And we're going to talk about black and white. We're going to talk about some other nifty stuff going on with this. And everybody have a great day. And always use your open eye. Now if I can figure out how to turn this thing off. I think I hit this button. Yeah, that'll do it.